Welcome to New Hope International Christian Center. I'm Pastor Marty, and on behalf of all of our pastors, Pastor Eric, Pastor Ruth, Pastor Ricky, and Pastor Amy, we want to welcome you to our morning online service. Now, we just finished our series on the book of Ephesians, and wow, we are so blessed by the writings of the Apostle Paul. And last Sunday, Pastor Ruth delivered a beautiful sermon for all of our mothers for Mother's Day. Today, I'm so excited because we're moving into a new series on the book of Psalms. Pastor Eddie Pastaro will be giving us his introduction to the book of Psalms. Following the word, we will receive our missions report from my beautiful wife, Sister Rebecca Ware. And then we'll have our announcements and ways to give from our very own Brother Bong Flores. So wherever you are right now, if you're sitting or if you're standing, let's get ready to praise God as Brother Joe Gonzaga leads us into praise and worship. I will see you at the end of the service to close us in prayer. So enjoy the service and may God bless you.
Let's worship. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Bless your holy name, Jesus. We bless your holy name, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God who always causes us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in his name. Thanks be to God.
Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn it up and praise his name. Hallelujah. 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 You're free to dance. Did you know that? It's in the Bible. Pick up your hands. You can dance. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his Jesus. As we lift you up, you are riding on our praise. Be enthroned over everything, you are seated in our praise. This is prophetic, I can feel it in the air. We lift our praise and you change the atmosphere. With hearts open now, everybody singing out.
Jesus, yes. the name above all names. There's no name written in heaven or on earth, but only the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship him tonight. And he's here. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. You're my refuge when I'm weary. You're the shelter for my soul. Thank you. 
Jesus. We exalt your name. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you come here tonight, you're sick. He's here to heal you. For those who are broken hearted, He's here to heal you. Whatever problems you have, whatever circumstances that you have, He's here in our midst tonight. Hallelujah. He is an answering God to our prayers. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Claim it tonight. Claim it tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know what, church? He deserves more than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. I'm so grateful to the Lord for giving me this uh, opportunity to share the Word of God with you this morning. And of course, I'm also grateful to Pastor Eric and to the pastoral staff of New Hope International for giving me this privilege. This morning, my Assignment was to introduce to you the book of Psalms. The word Psalms is from the Greek word Psalmos, which means hymns or songs. In Hebrew, the Psalms is titled Tehillim, which means praises. So the book of Psalms well, was used by the Israelites as their hymn book and they use it for their corporate worship as well as their personal worship. And today it will be a very good source for our meditation, especially in relation to our worship and thanksgiving to the Lord. The composers of the book of Psalms, who wrote this Psalms? Uh, the first one that we are introduced to is King David of Israel. He wrote uh, 73 Psalms. Another name is Asa. He was appointed by King David as chief musician, and that's recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Chronicles, excuse me, chapter 16, verse 5, and 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12. Other contributors to the book of Psalms is the sons of Korah. This family is not associated with the immediate family of Korah mentioned in number 16 and 17. Rather, these are probably uh, sons of Korah uh, right toward the Babylonian captivity. The next, uh, the other author mentioned who wrote uh, a few psalms was King Solomon in first. Kings chapter 4, verse 32, it says there that Solomon wrote many proverbs and songs. So we know that he contributed to the writing of these hymns. Uh, Moses is another author mentioned, given credit for Psalms 90. 
and about 50 other Psalms are anonymous. They are without known authors or writers. Now, when the book of Psalms were put together, probably after the return from the Babylonian exile, and during the second temple, the Israelites, or the collector, compiler of this book, uh, put five divisions to the book. The first book is Psalms 1 to 41. The second division is book number 2, is Psalms 42 to 72. The third division is Psalms 93, 73 to 89. I'm sorry. The third division is Psalms 73 to 89. The fourth division is Psalms 90 to 106. Book 5 is Psalms 107 to 150. Within these divisions, there are classifications of Psalms. The first of this classification is simply called hymns. Hymns of praises and thanksgiving. The other division, the other classification is penitential psalms. The third classification is the wisdom psalms. The fourth classification is the messianic or royal psalms. And the fifth is the imprecatory, imprecatory psalms. It's kind of hard to, to pronounce this sometimes. The imprecatory psalms. And classification, classification number six is the psalms of lament. The psalms of lament. Now, let's talk a little bit about these different classifications. The hymns of praise and thanksgiving. These are psalms of praise to God for who He is. Primarily, it is a, a song of praises to God, celebrating who He is. They bring out the attributes or essential characteristics of God, like His being spirit, His being sovereign, His being eternal, His being infinite, His being all-powerful, all-wise, and ever-present, present. So those are psalms that portrays the attributes and essential characteristics of God. And these hymns are extolling these uh, attributes of God in their worship. They also offer thanks, they offer thanksgiving to God for his acts and what he does or what he has done. So this is something that we need to recognize every time we worship the Lord, that in our worship, we should always be conscious of giving thanks to God for His acts or what He has done. Psalms 136, Psalms 8, Psalms 103, and Psalms 108 and 150 are good examples just to mention a few. But many, many of these psalms are focused on <clears throat> exalting God for who He is and expressing gratitude and thanks to the Lord for what He has done for us in our lives. 
So that should be the primary focus of our worship. We have to remember that what the Lord does is based on what and who He is. We see that we will be seeing that every time we will read the word of the Lord. Let me say that again. We always have to remember that what the Lord does is grounded on who and what He is because He cannot do anything that is contrary to His essential nature or to who He is. The second classification that I mentioned is what we call the penitential psalms. These psalms express deep sorrow for offending God, but also express faith in God's mercy for forgiveness. In other words, in a, a good example of this is Psalm 38 and also Psalms 51. These uh if we remember, were written by David when he committed that terrible sin against the Lord that involved not only adultery, but also murder. And uh, he expressed his deepest sorrow. But yet he also expressed that confidence that the Lord in his being is gracious and good and merciful and that he will find forgiveness and restoration from him. So these are the penitential psalms. It doesn't simply say that we are sinners and that we are uh, deplorable and utterly rotten, but it also express confidence that we have a God who can restore us who can forgive us and create a new life in us if we just simply come to him in deep sorrow for our sin. The third classification is the wisdom psalms. These are the general observations about life. These are simply observations about uh, uh, the reality of our life situation. It presents how God intended life to be lived. And these Psalms tells us the wrong way to live our, our lives and it also tells us the right way to live our lives. Not only that, it tells us also that there, is, there are consequences for what we do, what we say, or how we uh, direct our lives. Psalms chapter 1 is a very good example of this. And we also read a lot of the good admonitions on how to live our lives in obedience to the Lord and the consequences of it. Let me just uh, read to you Psalms chapter 1 so that you will know exactly what uh, I mean. Said, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, you sit in the seat of the scoffers. So this is wisdom from, from the book of Psalms chapter 1. We cannot live our lives according, according to the counsel of people that are in disobedience or that are opposed to God. There is consequence, a bad consequence for that lifestyle or that way of living. Verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. 
That's the right way to live in obedience to God and paying attention and being guided by His precious words. And then it tells us about the consequence. Those who follow God and His instructions through His word is that he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not weather and whatever he does, he prospers. Then he said, but the wicked are not so. Those who are living a life of wickedness in total disobedience and disregard of God and his words. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. So wisdom sums, tells us exactly how we should live our lives according to the design of God. And there are great consequences for it because the Lord is going to reward us not only with temporal blessing but also with blessings that has eternal values. The consequence also of the disobedient people, they are called in the Bible as unrighteous and wicked and of course there is the judgment of God that waits for them at the very end, for not uh, minding or living their lives according to the design of their creator. The next classification of the Psalms is called Messianic or Royal Psalms. So, this Psalms reflects on the hope of Israel for the kingdom under the reign of their Messiah. So when we, when we are worshiping the Lord, when the Israelites are worshiping the Lord, one of their hymns of praise or one of their thoughts are projected into the coming kingdom of their Messiah. That is their living hope. Uh, that's what they are living for. So Psalms chapter 2, Psalms 45, and Psalms 110 are good examples of this messianic or royal Psalms. It is focused on their coming king. The coming king, of course, is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Psalms 22 presents a very important part of their messianic program. The redemption of Israel that will require the suffering and death of the Messiah, but this is something that Israel has not yet understood. This they are expecting a Messiah who will come in great power and vanquish all their enemies that have subjected them for so many years and that they will come back to the position of prominence because they have now their own reigning king, the Messiah. But Israel right now has no concept that the, of that aspect of the messianic program that the Messiah has to come first as a suffering servant who will uh, die as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the, world, of the world and purchase their redemption so that they can enter the kingdom of God. So, in their focus, they, in their worship, many of those Israelites until today miss that aspect of their messianic hope. 
the last and final classification of the Psalms is what we call the Lament Psalms. These are deep crying over the distressful situations accompanied usually by pain and suffering from which there is no way out. Deep crying, deep sighing about a situation in life that seems to have no end and no answer. This is a deep sign for a sign for a situation in life where there is nothing but distress, pain, and suffering. And oftentimes, these psalms, in these psalms, the psalmist would ask the question, why? But then, these psalms also tells us that, or in these psalms also are expressed, the deep faith and hope that the Lord is able to deliver him from his dire situation. In other words, it's not all crying, but it is also a deep, uh, deep faith believing in God who is able to deliver them or him from his troubles. Very good expression of this is the Psalms written by King David when he was trying to escape the malicious uh, intention of his son Absalom to actually kill him. Absalom uh, succeeded in uh, turning all the people that were close to David to turn against David and that they were pursuing him with the intention of actually killing him. And so he said, O oh Lord, how my adversaries have increased. In other words, his troubles have increased from every uh, corner of his life. Many are rising up against me. Many are saying to my, of my soul, there is no deliverance for him in God. This is a very disparate situation uh, in the life of King David. And he was almost ready to give up and believe that there is no deliverance for him. But then verse 3 says, But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. I was crying to the Lord with my voice, and he answered me from his holy mountain. So the lament psalms are not only expression of deep sorrow and deep fear and because of the different situation that we have in our lives, but they are also uh, expressions of faith and trust in God, who alone has the power to deliver us from our distressful situation. This, uh, this focus is necessary as we come to the Lord in worship, especially these days, because all that we hear around us today are messages that can strike fear and distress in our lives. But we must also focus on the fact that God is able to deliver us and help us out of our troubles. The Going back to the hymns of praise, these are hymns that exalts the, like, like I've said, that focuses on who and what God is. That is really very, very important 
not only as we study the book of Psalms, but especially in our worship, because the book of Psalms is about worship. So we learn from this book of Psalms what the people of Israel are focusing on when they worship God in the temple. For example, a good example of that is uh, Psalms 103, I think. Let me just uh, read a couple of verses. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities and heal all your diseases. So it is focusing on God and giving him praise and thanksgiving for all the good things that he has done in our lives. But the good things that we see God does in our lives are really based on his characteristic as a good, omnibenevolent God. That is who God is. That's why God is good. That's why he does things that are good to us. Uh, but one of the things that I would like to also mention in our, as our focus when we are worshiping God is hymns of, of praise and uh, is, is our focus on, on, on how God is uh, uh, good to us, but who just exactly, uh, rather I would say, when we are we are worshiping God, we should focus on, on God and try to express our confidence in Him. I think that's what I'm trying to say. A very good psalm for this that we can use as our example is uh, Psalms 23. This is a psalm that focuses on the confidence, confident faith confident hope of a believer in God with uh, pride in his heart or instead of using the word pride, meaning with, with confidence in his heart, David shouted, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. The idea of being a shepherd during the time of David is, is a reference more to the ownership of the sheep or, or, or of the flock. What David is really saying is that the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, is the owner of my life. I belong to him. And who is the Lord? The Lord, of course, we know is the creator of heaven and earth and the creator of all things. So there is sufficiency in him. There is nothing that we need in life that he cannot provide. That's why he continued to exalt the Lord in praise and thanksgiving. He said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. In other words, food and refreshment comes from him. He said, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Then he said, ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For they run and they stop, they comforted me. You anoint me with oil, my cup runneth over. And then he ended it with, with the positive, hopeful assurance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So these are psalms that teaches us how to worship what to focus on, 
to as we worship God, we need to focus on who and what God is in Himself. And in this Psalms 23, He is our shepherd, the one who owns us and who assumes the responsibility for our will being. And there will be nothing lacking in our lives when we put our trust and commit ourselves wholly to follow him as our shepherd. In conclusion, I would like to just remind you that the book of Psalms is very important to us, especially in our worship, because the Psalms teaches us to focus like I have already said, who and what God is. God is spirit. And we, as the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 4, 24, God is spirit. And if you read that passage of scripture in John chapter 4, verse 24, he gave that to the Samaritan woman and the conversation was about worship. That when we worship, we need to focus on who and what God is as spirit. Spirit has no form. So, so he can and uh, no, no shape. So that's the reason why we cannot see God. There is no time when God is not with us. We cannot be anywhere where God cannot be present. And this is being spirit also make it possible for him to exercise his sovereignty. And so when we worship the Lord, we need not imagine anything else or how God looks like, but imagine God as spirit that although we cannot see him, he is there with us. So we are the, we must realize that God is spirit, God is eternal, God is sovereign, God is independent, that means that he does not depend on anything or anyone to supply on our need, all our need, because he is uh, in himself self-sufficient. And that we need to realize and focus on the fact that we are dependent on him. We are dependent subjects and we bow to him. When we worship, the Psalms teaches us to praise and thank God for all things and for what he has done. And in view of our fallen nature, of our being sinners, and, and once condemned to eternal damnation, the work of redemption in Christ Jesus must be on the top of our list for our praise and thanksgiving. The Lord bless you and uh, keep you. And thank you very much for this opportunity of uh, sharing with you. And thank you very much for uh, receiving this word from the Lord. Good morning, church. And thank you, Pastor Eddie, for your wonderful message. It's Mission Sunday, and I will be reporting on the missionaries we support in the city of Long Beach and also in San Diego. Pastor Sophia King and Pastor Amy Boyer King are the pioneers of the Jerusalem Church in the city of Long Beach. They've established that church for 11 years, and they've celebrated three years in that location. Let us hear their introduction as they as God moves them forward in the community 
in the Cambodian community in the city of Long Beach. We are Sophia and Amy Crane. Together with our four children, we are working with the Khmer speaking Cambodian community here in the US. During this time, we all experience a lot of change, adjustment in how we do life and ministry. We have a family that we've been working with, discipling and investing for over 12 years. Last week, the matriarch passed away at 92 years of age. During this time, we've been able to minister to this family a lot more than the usual. One of her sons and his wife have been reaching out for hope and truth despite his father's strong connection as a Buddhist temple leader. Even though we have spent more time with his wife, um, the husband has started to lead in prayer and searching for answers. Their daughter has been studying the Bible with us and been baptized and helped baptize a cousin even just this last year. We are many, we have many family asking for Bible and searching the truth and hope. We thank you for helping us to be here for such a time as this, to minister to people that never had someone speak their language and teach the truth in love. We thank you for reaching your communities and the world. We are together with you in this for his kingdom and his glory. Pastor Sophia and Amy King's ministry to the Cambodian community is to share the love of Christ, especially to those who are in need. A family of five who just immigrated to the U.S. were provided with basic necessities for the home and prayed for their comfort and peace. A very poor family with six children were provided with pillows and food for their cat, healing prayers for the sick. The woman, Pastor Sofia, is giving diapers to is about to give birth when their garage was cleaned out by a thief. They gave pillows to Kevin, who is homeless and drifts from between homes in the area. Their girls love picking up food to give to the neighbors. They also have been baking loaves of bread and giving them to neighbors they do not know. Last Easter, their children decided that they would give away all their Easter eggs to the families that do not know Jesus and use it as a way to share who Jesus is. They also started a class on the Pentateuch via Zoom taught by Pastor Amy King's dad, Pastor Bill Boyer, but only two students showed up, but both of them came away saying they were feeling the closeness to the Holy Spirit and like they've never experienced before. They're being asked to help many uh, pre-Christians to get Bibles on their phones or deliver it to their homes. Many people are puzzled and ask so many questions why they give so much away, especially brand new stuff, while their own family goes without or far less inferior stuff to what they give away. But they thank CityServe who are able to give even more. They have people that have stopped debating and are now asking about Christ. The hunger for true hope in the hearts of the Cambodian community is getting abundant. Thank you that we have been uh, praying and partnering with them, and they're very grateful for that. Here's a short update on Jeffrey and Kelsey Chalkomike, leaders of Chi Alpha at San Diego State University. It is the end of the semester, and they have been doing their best on how to respond well during this pandemic, especially on what their ministry would be like. There have been thoughts and fears of not having a ministry anymore, losing students, self-critic of their values, pretty much doubt hit them so hard. But God, but thank God the Bible says that in their weakness, God is strong. It also says with God, anything is possible. Even though it's close to the semester, they are so blessed to see how many groups and projects they have maintained and created during this pandemic time. For Jeffrey alone, he has been leading a small group, co-leading a resource group for their student leaders, 
and he started three new groups or Zoom sessions that are about teaching the instrument of the cajon, teaching about worship, and also a group that watches anime together. For Kelsey, she has grown a brand new small group of all new ladies, and it's one of the largest small groups they have in San Diego State University. She is also mentoring two students who are brand new to Chi Alpha. On top of all her Chi Alpha internship work, she also started a video series of prayer practices. So overall, God has been so good to them and has been opening creative minds to adapting well to the needs of the students. With all your additional responses, prayer, and support, Kelsey and Jeffrey could not have been able to do what they do for the students. Two of Jeff's guy student one-on-ones ended up in tears as they shared how thankful they are for the love that was poured out to them. They couldn't imagine handling this pandemic without the Chi Alpha community. These tears were a huge reminder to Jeff that it takes a village to do what they do for them. So we, they want to thank all of you for your continuous support for both Jeff and Kelsey and our ministry. So let's bow our heads and pray for the missionaries we support in Long Beach and San Diego. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the lives of Pastor Sophia King, Pastor Amy Boyer King and their children, their ministry, and their love for the Cambodian community. Continue to bless Jerusalem Church and continue to prosper that church as they reach out to those people that who do not know Christ. They are a beacon of light in, in Long Beach and they have pushed away darkness in that Cambodian community. Keep them healthy, Lord, and keep them safe, especially during this pandemic, and also the children, and continue to provide for all their needs, both physical, emotional, and spiritual. Thank you, Lord, also for the lives of Jeff and Kelsey Mike and their ministry in San Diego State University with Chi Alpha. We are just so blessed to hear this um, reports on how they have touched so many students' lives in that Alpha community. Continue to keep them safe as well, Lord. Keep them healthy, protect them from this coronavirus, and continue to um, provide for their finances and also their daily needs, as well as their emotional and spiritual needs. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these people that you have called to serve you and to serve those who do not know you. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So good worshiping with you today. The next thing we do every week is to express our gratitude to God for his goodness to us by giving a portion of our gifts back to Him. We want to say thank you to those who are giving generously in the middle of this crisis, in the middle of this pandemic. Through your giving, you help us to reach out and minister to those who need to hear the Word of God. If this is your first time, you don't need to give. We just want to bless you. Here are the ways that you can give by logging into our website at www nhiccag.org or you can scan our QR code that will lead you to our church link and PayPal account. And lastly, you can write us a check payable to New Hope International Christian Center. In addition, if you are looking for a Bible study group or you need a prayer, please send us your request through our email. Thank you for joining us and hope you join us again next week. Wow, what an awesome word. I am so blessed. Thank you, Pastor Eddie, for leading us in our new series on the Book of Psalms. And I also want to thank all of you for joining us today at New Hope International Christian Center. It is my hope that you will join us again next Sunday. So as we go about our day, 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. 